Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me get myself together here. Good morning and welcome to today's edition of The Porch. For those that are gathering this morning, thank you so much for being a part of today's broadcast. I'll give you a few moments to come on and share uh, today's broadcast. I've been away for a few days, just taking a break. So it's good to be, to be back as we get ready to close out uh, this month and um, get ready to go into the final month of 2023. It's been a great, phenomenal year, and I want to welcome those that, of course, join me on Clubhouse. Excuse me, those that are joining me on Facebook Live, uh, members of Crusaders Church or Crusaders Ministry. Um, also, of course, those that are part of Impact University as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on and being a part of today's broadcast. I really, really do thank you for all of your support. And um, as we gather, please share today's broadcast, especially those on Facebook Live. I need you especially. Remember, Facebook does not notify all of those who follow me on this page. So I need you to help me get the word out. Today we're going to talk about salvation. Um, I know it's a, a term that we hear often, are you saved? Uh, but we're going to look at the different aspects of salvation and why it's such an important part of our lives. And I do want to also recommend a few books as we come toward the end of the year. I've gathered most of my books, not all of them, but most of them I have at hand. I'm going to be sharing some of the books that often I don't share um, on these platforms and encourage you to get them and read them uh, as we get ready to close out 2023 and get ready to go into 2024. We still have a month left. It's not over yet. It's been a great year, phenomenal year. Looking forward to a favor for 2024. And by the way, we will be doing a master class on favor coming up in a couple of weeks. And um, it'll be a new master class. I haven't taught on favor in quite some time. I've been studying it diligently. Have a new book out called uh, Prayers That Unlock Favor. I had a copy of it. I gave it away. I was in Jacksonville, Florida and gave it to Bishop Reed. And um, I'm going to get another copy and show it to you. But it's a new book called Prayers That Unlock Favor. And I encourage you to get a copy. And uh, you can go to Amazon.com or christianbook.com and get a copy of the new book on favor prayers that unlock favor and uh, it'll be a good read for the close of the year as we get ready for 2024 and we're going to do a special teaching called keys that unlock favor i've told them this before but i have even some new insight i always study the subject of favor grace it's one of my favorite subjects Keys to Unlock Favor. And I'll be letting you know how you can register for that particular master class coming up in a couple of weeks. It's not up yet, but we usually go, of course, go to jebiblestudy.com to register for that. Also, I want to recommend, since we're going to talk about salvation today, salvation is deliverance. Uh, they're, they're words that are interchangeable. Deliverance from demons, deliverance from sin, Deliverance from hell, uh, deliverance from trouble. It's all salvation. And there's a book that I often don't talk about. It's really, an, uh, I believe, it, uh, a book that every deliverance minister, believer needs to read. It's called Unshakable. And it's a book on the subject of double-mindedness and schizophrenia. How to be delivered from it. The spirits, the three major strongholds of the double-minded personality are rejection, rebellion, and the root of bitterness. It's called unshakable because the scripture says a double-minded a double -minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And we, we need to become unshakable. We need to be stable people. And this book is an in-depth study uh, on the subject of Satan's plan to destroy your foundation. Really, the enemy tries to we, we in studying deliverance the enemy has tried to put this pattern on every person some people of course he's not successful in doing it but many people he is successful and they live very unstable lives 
And God does not want you to be an unstable person. He wants you to be a stable person. And so this goes into the in-depth study. It's based on Frank and Ida May, May, really Ida May Hammond's revelation of schizophrenia found in Pigs in the Parlor. I, I bring it even, I, I wrote a whole book on it. I was so blessed by that revelation. It's only one chapter in that book, but I wrote a whole book on it. And it's called Unshakable. So if you've never read this book, and especially if you're in deliverance and ministering to people that need deliverance, um, I encourage you to, to get a copy of it and uh, read uh, that particular book. I'm looking for my, um, I just had my best-selling book, which of course is Prayers That Route Demons. Okay, I don't, I don't know what I did with it. Okay, but there's another one. This one is called Desperate Prayers for Desperate Times. Desperate Prayers for Desperate Times. And it really talks about when you're in trouble, you're, you're desperate, you need salvation, deliverance. This book talks about God's 911 emergency situations for your children, for your family. Another book that I would encourage. It's not for everyone, but there may be someone in a situation where you really need help badly. I encourage you to get a copy of this one, Desperate, Desperate Prayers for Desperate Times. Um, and then, of course, many of you are familiar. Here it is. I found it. This is my best-selling book, Prayers That Route Demons. It's been out a number of years. It is still well-read around the world. If you've never read, people actually carry this book with them in their bags, their purses, um, some of them carry with their Bible because most of the prayers in here are based on scriptures. And um, it's a it's a good read. Prayers that route demons. Um, I never imagined when I wrote this book how popular it would become. Prayers for defeating demons and overcoming the power of darkness. So if you never read this, get a copy. If you've worn out one copy, get another copy. Or get some copies and share it. It would be a great Christmas gift for people. Everyone that I know who read this book say their life was changed by this particular book, Prayers That Route Demons. Okay, so that's uh, something I, I want to discuss uh, as we come to the end of the year. Also this morning, I ask many of you to sow into what we're doing, primarily in South Africa, Um I haven't been able to do anything recently for them, but um, Mom Carol is a, a older lady that we support in South Africa. She has a, a a shelter for street children in Southwest Township. She feeds them, she uh, teaches them, and we support her monthly. And I haven't been able to, I haven't been on recently, but many of you began to sow this morning. Thank you so much for doing that in our missions project and if you, you want to do that then feel free to sow a seed at the giving address as we especially as we come into the holiday season um go to cash app je global which stands for john eckhart global or paypal at paypal.me slash apostle je the number one uh, you can also zale at ekh j-o-h-n at gmail.com uh, you can also give through the stars here on Facebook Live. Hit the star button next to the heart and like button. Or you can, of course, give in Clubhouse as well. And I always decree favor, grace, blessing, prosperity, abundance over those that are sowing. I also decree Psalms 41, the first three verses. Read those verses. It talks about the blessing that comes upon those who remember the poor. It's a, it's a, Decree that I decree over my life because I remember the poor. I give to the poor. It's one of the greatest things you can do. And uh, Psalms 112 verse 3, the man who has wealth and riches, it says in verse 9, he has dispersed, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. So God exalts and promotes those who remember the poor. And as you give into these mission projects that I'm doing in South, South Africa, in Liberia with the clinic projects, the water projects in different parts of the world, Psalms 41 gives certain promises to those who do that 
Uh, God will deliver you in time of trouble. God will preserve you. God will make up your bed in languishing. Amazing promises in Psalms 41 verses 1 through 3. So I decree Psalms 41 1 through 3 over everyone who's been sowing into this ministry because we consistently give to medical missions, uh, water projects, and children's missions, primarily in South Africa and also in parts of Western Africa. And so thank you so much for your support. I decree favor, grace, blessing, prosperity, abundance, and multiplication over your life in the months and even years to come in Jesus name. May God multiply you a thousand times more. Deuteronomy 111. May the blessing of the Lord make rich. Proverbs 1022. May you leave an inheritance to your children's children. Proverbs 1322. May God take pleasure in your prosperity. Psalms 35. May you be satisfied in famine. Psalms 37. May you come into a wealthy place. Psalms 66 and 12. May wealth and riches be in your house. Psalms 112 and verse 3. May you break forth on the right hand and on the left. Isaiah 54 and 3. May the breaker go before you. Micah 2.13. May God do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Ephesians 3.20. May God supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, Philippians 4 and 19. And may you be taught to profit. May God teach you to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. That is in Isaiah 48 and 17. I decree quantum breakthroughs, miracles, gold, silver. Let it come into your hands. The gold is his. The silver is his. Haggai 2 and 8. May you find the vein for silver and the vein for gold. May it come into your hands. Prosperity and wealth. May it be your portion. May, may As you give, may it be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over. May men give unto your bosom. I decree it and I speak it now over your life. As you partner with me financially. And again, go to the giving addresses that I give. I haven't been on in, in a little over a week. So it's good to be back. Uh, go to Cash App JE Global and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. Also, you can Zelle at E C K H J O H N. E C K H J O H N. I'm going to take a sip of water here. My throat's a little dry. So, excuse me. Okay, let's um let's look at I'm gonna look at a verse uh this morning that um I haven't quoted in quite some time, but as I was in an earlier room today in Clubhouse, um this verse came to me, and uh it's a verse that I would encourage you to memorize. Um thank you again for those that are coming on, share the broadcast, it's Facebook Live, please share, put it on your page. And share the broadcast. Um, let me read it for you. It's in Habakkuk chapter 3. Uh, verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk 3. 17 and 18. It says this. Uh, that's verse 16. I don't want that. I want Habakkuk 3. 17 and 18. Having a problem bringing it up today. Let me try it this way. Okay. It says, although the, uh, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall, not, shall yield no meat, the flock shall, not, shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. It's a pretty bad situation. That he's describing. Uh, it's a situation of famine. Of drought. No fruitfulness. No livestock. No productivity. And then he says in verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now it's interesting. That he talks about rejoicing. In a time of famine. 
and being joyful in a time of famine. And, and it, the verse doesn't end by just saying, I'll rejoice in the Lord. In other words, sometimes people say, though, bad things happen and it doesn't look good. I'm just going to rejoice in the Lord. And the scripture does say rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So we should rejoice. But he, he concludes it by saying, uh, I will, I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's what I want to talk about this morning. The God of salvation. In other words, God brings salvation to his, to him in this difficult time. God doesn't leave him in this drought, in this famine to die. God brings salvation to him. Salvation is a word that we've heard for many years. Um, I think that it, it becomes too common sometimes. We hear it so much and we think we know what it means. In the Greek, the word salvation or the word save is the word sozo, S-O-Z-O. -O, and it means life. It means to be healed. It means to be delivered. It means to be rescued. Uh, it means to be restored. It means to be brought out of. So they're, they're, the, the Bible is a book of salvation. Now we know that, of course, God saves us from sin. The Jesus came that he will save his people from their sins. Um, the Bible says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10. So there is an eternal salvation that we receive by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you study the Bible, it's a book of salvation from beginning to end. God saved Israel out of Egypt, delivered them, brought them out. That was the salvation of a whole nation. A whole nation was saved. God brought Daniel out of a lion's den, saved him from the lions. God saved the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. God saved David from Saul. Uh, from his deadly enemy. So we see salvation throughout the scriptures, a meaning rescue. Jesus came, delivered people from demons, from sickness, healed them, delivered them. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, Acts 10, 38, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. He was anointed, Isaiah 61, Luke 4, to preach salvation, to preach deliverance to the captives. And so salvation is an all-inclusive word. And often the scripture calls God the God of our salvation. God is a God that saves. God is a God that delivers. God is a God that rescues. God is a God that brings out. Uh, one of my favorite verses is in Psalms chapter 37 I quote it almost every day and it says that that uh, will be satisfied in drought now drought and famine were death sentences to many people remember when Elijah went to the widow woman and asked him for a piece of bread ask her for a piece of bread she said all I have is a, a cake left I'm going to eat it me and my son are going to eat it and we're going to die so she knew that death was imminent because there was no more food. Famine meant nothing grew, nothing was produced, no oil, um, no food, no wheat, no grain. And so you died. And yet the scripture says, I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation. Though the, 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 the tree does not blossom. Let me read it for you. I, I should know this verse by heart. And I'm having a problem bringing it up. But let me read it again. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall, shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. In other words, God will save me from this. 
God will deliver me from this. The reason I can rejoice is because I will not die in this situation. Now, I mentioned this book, Desperate Prayers for Desperate Times. God, God will not allow you to die in that situation. No matter how bad it looks. No matter how famine or drought comes. And those are terms that represent something spiritual. A death sentence. God will deliver you and save you. Those who trust in him. And you can rejoice in the God of your salvation. I want you to take this to heart. That God is the God of heaven and earth. Uh, God is the God of glory. Uh, God is the God of power. God is the God of wisdom. Um, God is the God of Israel. God is the God of all nations. Um, God is the God of gods. The scripture actually calls him the God of gods. But he's also the God of salvation. He's the God of salvation. He's the God that brings salvation. He's the God that brings deliverance. He's the God that rescues. He's the God that brings out. He's the God that delivers you. He's the God that rescues you. He's the God that comes at, to your aid. He's the God that comes to your assistance. An amazing psalm is Psalm 18. When David is in trouble and he calls upon the Lord, and God comes and saves him. It says God comes in a storm. The clouds become dark. And God comes in a storm and rescues him from his enemies. Probably a case of Saul being close to capturing David. And God comes in a storm to deliver David from the hands of Saul. The storm interrupts uh, the enemy's plan to kill David. And it's very descriptive. If you read Psalm 18, um, it says darkness was under his feet. Then, then it rained, it rained hailstones and coals of fire came. God rained upon the enemy. God came in a fiery storm. And uh, it was a picture of salvation, a picture of God delivering David. So David could rejoice in God's salvation. Remember, he's the God of salvation, people. Uh, he's a provider. Thank God he's a healer. Uh, but first and foremost, he's a savior. He saves. He rescues. He delivers us in our trouble, in our situations. <coughs> so no matter what you find yourself in, they that call upon the Lord shall be saved. They that call upon the name of the Lord <coughs> excuse me, shall be saved, shall be rescued shall be delivered. Uh, often David would say, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. He heard me out of his holy hill. He came and saved me. He came and delivered me. He came and rescued me. Know him as the God of your salvation. Believe that he's the God of your salvation. He's not going to leave you in that situation where the enemy is able to destroy you. So I love that verse in Habakkuk. Even though things look deadly, things look as if there's nothing, no fruit, no livestock, no nothing. It's, it's a death sentence. Yet, yet I will rejoice. Why? Because God is the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. God saves me from this. God delivers me from this. God rescues me from this. God sets me free from this. Let us never lose focus of that, that our God is a God that rescues. David said, I'm young, I've been young and now I'm old, but yeah, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. God will not forsake you. God will save you. He's the God of my salvation. He's the God of my salvation. I trust in him for salvation. I trusted him for, for eternal salvation. I trusted he'd deliver me from the hands of my enemies. I trusted he'll bring me out of situations where I feel trapped. I, I feel uh, surrounded by the enemy. Uh, David once said, they, they surrounded me like bees. 
You know, bees, when they surround you, it's like a swarm that comes around you. A swarm. Have you, have you ever felt swarmed by the enemy? Have you ever felt a swarm? There's nowhere to go. They surround you. There's no way to run. There, there's no way to hide. When a, when a hive of bees attack you, you can't escape. Well, David said they surrounded me like bees, like a swarm. And yet God came and rescued David and delivered David. The Psalms are about salvation. David sang about his salvation and the psalmist did too. They sang, they rejoiced, they praised God for salvation. It's one of the most remarkable things that can happen in your life. And most of you listening to me, you have testimony after testimony after testimony of how God saved you. And this is why you rejoice. This is why you praise God. Never lose your praise. Never lose your joy. Never lose your rejoicing because God has saved you. God is saving you. God will save you. Uh, God will deliver you. God will rescue you. No matter what you find yourself in, God is the God of my salvation. So keep saying, yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Back at 3, 17, 18. Remind yourself of those verses. Read them because you're not the first one that is dealt with an adverse situation. You may say, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know my situation. Well, read those verses. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Many have gone through adverse situations before when God delivered them. And you may be going through something now. And God will deliver you. Could be a relationship situation, a uh, it could be a financial situation, could be a health situation, could be a business situation, could be a ministry situation. Call upon the God of salvation. Call upon the God of your salvation. Say, Lord, you are my salvation. You saved me. You deliver me. See, this is not just about whether you go to heaven or hell. Salvation can take place while you're on the earth. Because all of us at times need deliverance or salvation from something. It's, 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 it's a universal, uh, salvation. Everyone has experienced something and you can rejoice because God will deliver you out of the hand of your enemies and set you free. That's what I wanted to share this morning. Um, I thought it was something. And when I read that verse, I said, let me just remind myself of this and quote it again. Uh, sometimes God brings us back to scriptures that we may have read before, but kind of overlook. So man, no matter what situation you find yourself in, I want to encourage you and, and speak and decree salvation over you today. I decree salvation, deliverance, healing, rescue in every situation you may find yourself in. If you're watching me for the first time, I decree salvation, deliverance, healing, restoration over your life. God is the God of salvation. God is the God of salvation. God is the God of my salvation. God saves me. God rescues me. God delivers me. Now you may say, well, I don't need God to do that for me. Yes, you will. <coughs> okay. You don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God. The things that God can deliver you from that man can't. When you find yourself with no help, you find yourself with no one to rescue you, God can do it for you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And, and trust in him for salvation and for rescue. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And <clears throat> believe God to be the God of your salvation. I'm going to sign off and drink some water. My throat's a little dry, but I'm fine. Good, good to be back. We'll do it again tomorrow. We're going to continue the discussion in Clubhouse. And thank you for your your donations today, your giving. Um, I decree favor, <coughs> grace, blessing, prosperity, and abundance over your life. Even as you help bless others who are less fortunate, that God would remember you. And Psalms 41, 1 through 3 will come on your life. And you'll experience the blessings of remembering those in need. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And as always, until you hear from me again, 
God bless you and double shalom. God bless.